can you have a negative slope? Well, that takes a lot of explanation, but yes, you can actually. But there's a lot of things that you have to know and you have to really understand in order to get things done the way they're supposed to be. First of all, hopefully you remember Euclid Book 1, Proposition Number 47. If you don't, you need to go back there and you need to learn all that stuff. And we're going to get into that right over here. First of all, let's talk about the Cartesian coordinate system. Now, I'm pretty sure I covered this in a previous video, but if I did not, let's just cover it first of all. Um, I think I told you guys about how they came up with the Cartesian coordinate system. Basically, what you need to know at this point is that there are two axes, okay? You have your x-axis and your y-axis, okay? X is always going to be on the horizontal. Why do they call it horizontal? Because of the horizon, all right? And you run across the horizon, so... Um, you know, as you're running along, the horizon is like on your side there, and uh, you're running down the path um, along the horizon. All right, because really, uh, the the portion from the land to the sky that's that's the horizon right there. Okay, so the x-axis will always be your horizontal. Now your vertical would be straight up. Okay, it's just like the sun rises from the east. Okay, that's where you get your rise and you run. I'm sure you've heard of rise and run. Well, that's where you get your rise and you run. You run down the horizon, you rise with the, with the sun in the east. Okay, so there's rise over run. Y-axis is rise, x-axis is run. So far, so good. Now, what about these coordinates? Well, we have two and three here and four and nine here. Now when you're listing Cartesian coordinates you're going to list your point on the x-axis first and then on the y-axis. So what you do is that there's an absolute zero point where the y-axis and the x-axis intersect. Okay, So you have your x-axis, your y-axis, they intersect at point zero zero. Okay, so if you have a number three there, then you're saying, let's just say, you've run three feet from the zero point on the x-axis. Okay, so you've run three feet from the zero point on the x-axis. All right. Uh, same way here. Uh, we have the two here. The two is the x-axis, so we're saying that we've run two feet from the zero point on the x-axis. Now, what about the second number? The second number in this particular case was 3. Alright, so you're actually going to jump in the air 3 feet from the y-axis, y which is 0. Okay, so if you were standing perfectly on the ground, you'd be at 0y. You jump 3 feet, you're jumping 3 feet off the ground, so you're 3 feet from the 0 point on the y-axis. So you've run two feet from the from the zero point on the x-axis, you've jumped three feet from the y. Okay. So you're kind of getting an idea here. Now, let's go on with this. This here is your slope. Okay? Now, if you remember the Euclid Book 1, Proposition Number 47, you have a distance here, which is a squared. You have a distance here, which is b squared. And you actually have a distance here, which is c squared. All three of these distances are always going to be positive. Why? Because you don't run a negative four miles. You don't run a negative two miles. You either run two miles or you don't. Okay? You either jump three feet in the air or you don't. You don't jump a negative three feet in the air. That's stupid. Okay. So, when it comes to the distance formula, this, this, and this, all three of these distances are going to be positive. Okay. Always. Now, it doesn't matter what these coordinates are. In the end, these three distances will be positive. Okay. So, let's say that this point down here is uh, 2, 3. And this point up here is 4, 9. 
Okay. What if you wanted to know the distance from here to here? Well, you're going to take the 4 here, you're going to subtract the 2 here, and what you'll have is 2 feet. So there's, there's 2 feet between this point and this point. And that's positive. Okay. Likewise, you're going to have a starting point of 3 feet in the air. Let's say you're able to elevate yourself 3 feet in the air and you are able to jump all the way up to 9 feet in the air. Okay? You've already started at 3 feet, now you're up to 9 feet. Alright, how do you figure that out? You have the 9 feet here, you have the 3 feet here, so you subtract 9 from 3 and you get 6 feet. So you've actually jumped 6 feet in the air from this point to this point. Okay? So, um, your Y2 is going to be 9 feet from the um, horizon. Okay, your Y2 is going to be 9 feet from the horizon. And your Y1 is going to be 3 feet from the horizon. Okay, so there's where we get Y2 minus Y1, which is going to be this distance right here. Now, if you'll remember, you get this distance here, which is 4 minus 2. You're going to square that, and that's going to be 4 right there. You have your 9 minus 3, which is going to be 6. So you get 6 squared. That's going to be 12. 12 plus 4 is 16. All right? And if you square root 16, you're going to get 4. And that's how you get this third side. Remember, this forms a physical square, this forms a physical square, and the square area here and the square area here added together is going to become the square area here. And if you square root that, you'll have the distance of one side. And that's what we were talking about in Euclid Book 4, Proposition Number 47. Uh, book 4, Book 147. Sorry about that. My slip of the tongue here. And that's where we get the distance formula. C, which is this up here, equals x2 minus x1. You're finding this distance between here and here. Plus y2 minus y1. You're finding this distance from here to here. You're going to square both the numbers, which means you'll have the square area here and your square area here. You add those together, you get the square area here, and you square root that, and that's when you'll get the slope right here. All right. Now, what about slope? Okay, slope equals y2 minus y1. So you'll get the distance here, and you'll divide it by the distance here, and you'll get the slope of this line. All right. Now, slope doesn't necessarily mean the distance of this line. It just means the slope of this line. So the distance of this line is always going to be positive even if the slope is negative. Wow! I bet you didn't know that. You can have a negative slope and a positive distance in the same mathematical problem. Alright. Let's continue on here. Let's say you start having negative coordinates. Now what are you going to do? Okay. The number line is going to pass through right here. Okay, so it's going to chop this triangle off into a couple of pieces. Alright, now we know that this point is nine spaces from the number line. Okay, but the entire distance here has to be determined. Now how do you do that? Well, we know that part of this line is going to fall three feet from the number line. Okay, so it's going to have a distance of negative 3 feet. So, 9 plus negative 3 is going to be 6. So the entire distance is going to be 6. Alright, so that's where you're going to get a positive value there. Same thing here. You start with a 4, you have a negative 2. Remember that negative 2 is going to be... Uh, See, this line is going to be split up by the by the um, um, 
number line, okay, this line is going to be split up by the number line. Part of this is going to be in the positive direction, so this is going to be in the negative direction. So, 4 minus 2 is actually going to be 2. Alright, so now you're beginning to see why you have negative slopes, but you still have a positive distance. And I will go into greater detail about this. This is part one. I will cover this a little bit further in part two. So this discussion is not over with yet, but I think you're beginning to see the concept of the difference between the distance here, distance, and slope. Slope can be negative, but distance always has to be positive because you never go a negative distance. All right. I'll tell you more in the next video, so stay tuned.